Welcome to On Marketing, a show where we explore marketing's first principles, mental models, and my favorite, contrarian takes. My aim is not to tell you what to think, it's assisting you in improving how you think about marketing and life. It's November 17th, 2023. I'm Jordan Ogren, a marketing strategist by day and a podcast host by night. Today's episode is special as I have two guests. This is the first time I've ever done this. Joining me today are Timber Smith, the DEI coordinator at the city of Appleton, and Andy Anand, also at the city of Appleton as a communications and public engagement manager. And these two individuals both host the Appleton Engage podcast. While this was, as I said, my first time, this episode went way better than I expected, but really that shouldn't be a surprise as both of these people are co-hosts of a podcast, so obviously they know what they're doing. I let them run with it. In our conversation, we discuss how understanding your audience and context is crucial for effective marketing and comms, how storytelling is a powerful marketing tool for creating impactful content and building relationships, how collaboration leads to more successful marketing strategies by bringing in diverse perspectives, how podcasting is an effective platform for sharing stories and resources and building community engagement, and finally, the importance of pursuing hobbies and interests outside of work to improve the work you do. Ready to get into the episode? Before we do, make sure to subscribe to the newsletter where you get new episodes every Friday and I share extra insights, different thoughts and concepts that I'm working on. The link to sign up for that is in the first line of the show notes. Thank you. And also a reminder that if you're watching this, you can listen to it as a podcast. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, you can head to YouTube and see my beautiful mug and watch this episode. Finally, this is for the legal department. All opinions shared in this podcast are individual views of the host and the guest, not representing their employers or associated organizations. This content is intended for informational purposes only and should not be considered professional marketing guidance. Listeners act on the information provided at their own risk. See on the other side. First question, what is marketing? So marketing is a very uh, umbrella term, but it really gets granular when we see the audience we cater to or the organization we work for. So I, as a communication specialist, have worked for different organizations. So the first part is always to understand who you are serving to and what 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 kind of product you are you know launching in the market. So that's in the corporate sense, but when you are in a government or administration, it's like what kind of services you are basically marketing them uh, with. So it's very important to learn exactly which industry you're getting into and use the same basic principles you have learned in the college, but the usage becomes totally different after understanding the market you are working with. Hmm. I, you know, I'm going to say something like uh, when these crazy things like marketing is life. Mm. And, the re- and the reason I say this is because you literally are always marketing, even if you're marketing yourself. Right. Mm. And we may not realize like that is something that we're constantly doing, but it is something we're constantly doing. We're constantly marketing ourselves to whether it's our families or society or whatever other groups that we're uh, that we're part of, um, we're always promoting ourselves. We're branding ourselves. Um, so, marketing is life. Hmm. I love that. I think that's why so many metaphors are applicable to marketing because it's just so relatable. Whether it's and there's definitely people against like dating metaphors. To your point, you're always marketing yourself. You're always trying to be seen with the people that then your significant other one would be like, oh, he's, he's, you know, credible. And I mean, the same would be true for marketing. If you're seen with credible uh, people, it's one of the persuasion tactics, but I really like that kind of large umbrella. But um, Andy, I really enjoyed how you talked about the who or the market, which gets to the fact of the importance of context in marketing, that the context kind of directs or changes how you market. How do you think about context in the terms of communications and marketing? Like, how do you know what context you're in to then change your marketing or do it um, better? Oh, absolutely. Context is crucial to the marketing tactics. Uh, Let's say we are marketing to an age group uh, who doesn't have access to uh, digital uh, media. So you, you have to significantly think of what are the challenges and how you can overcome without kind of, um, pushing them to the edge. So we had to look for the other uh, marketing tactics, like reaching them in person, doing some booths. So it continues Mm. to evolve. 
Marketing these days with the advent of social media have totally changed 360 degrees. So the way we are seeing things, uh, the way we are experiencing uh, products is very different than what it was 10 years back. Uh, mm. Even the old population is these days using reels and Instagram. And I, I was like looking at one of the reels, for, which was like a pianist. He's in his late 70s. So he was using that that wow. uh, platform to reach out to his people and he's a maestro. So we didn't even know that, you know, people of that age are, you know, so inclined to use this as a platform. So um, context is very important. You have to understand the narrative of where, you, where you are coming from and also the platform which you will use. Like for Appleton Engage, we chose a platform, a podcast, because we were like tapping upon that radio experience of people years mm -hmm. back. So podcast is just a reinvent of that radio experience. So if you ask my dad, hey, do you listen to this podcast? Oh, so, okay, you're talking about something like a radio show? Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, but the thing is like, you had to tune in live, but this is what the, the best part of podcast is like, you can record, you can listen it when you want to. So I think the context and even the platform has evolved a lot so you have to really think it through exact what kind of messaging you are trying to reach out with and what would be the best way to reach out with so if you're looking for a young population go back to instagram snapchat tiktok you're going for a middle-aged tiktok or instagram instagram not so facebook more but if you're like 70s 60s 50s facebook would be the way to go mm -hmm. so that's how we built it through the platforms but yes, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very different time we are living in and we have so much information. So it gets critical and sometimes very confusing too. Timber, do you got anything to add to that? Nope. <laughs> she, did a, she did a solid job. But, she you she know nailed what? it. No, but you know what? Timber does a podcast called Kosh Podcast. And I think you know that too. And he does the marketing. So he's trying to be humble here, but he does the entire marketing and even whatever uh, cover picture you see and the and the wow. branding of that stuff. So he knows stuff. He's just trying to be. <laughs> I'm learning stuff is what I'm going to say. I, um, I haven't quite figured that out. Uh, maybe a little better at the branding part, more so than the, the marketing part. And um I'm I'm trying to learn myself like how to target specific audiences and what are the tools that you utilize to do that. Yeah. And it's constantly, as Andy noted, changing, right? That the context, the generation, everything is always rapidly changing, which for me, it makes the importance of critical thinking or just in general thinking, like what is the message rather than, oh, everybody's on Facebook, I'll run Facebook ads. It's like, well, is your audience there and the message you're trying to say is that best put into a Facebook or as you just said about your podcast, which I want to get to later, if you have this longer message or you have maybe more emotional message, maybe that audio video component can get that message delivered better. So I really like that. But I mean, to the point, it's quite complex. So you have to think okay. a little bit. It is. I love that. So uh, it seems that both of you have been in, uh, whether it's, you know, communications, podcasting, marketing for a bit, what's something that has changed that you believed five years ago, 10 years ago, maybe even a year ago in today, you're not maybe 180 on that belief, but you struggle to hold that same belief because you've seen things, you've experienced things. Does anything come to mind in marketing, branding, podcasting? So if you ask me, one powerful thing which I never used to believe in when I was young, younger than what I am today, is the power of collaboration and tapping the knowledge of people coming from different backgrounds. This mm. is huge if you see it. Like, you know, if I would have been in India, I would have been working with my own folks and might have a tunnel vision maybe. But when I came to state, that thing opened up. There are so many truths and uh, so many pathways to reaching the same location and destination and goal. That's the power of collaboration. So mm -hmm. if you look at the this podcast we do or the work I do every day, we collaborate and we collaborate with people with different ideas, notions, customs, convention. And this is what makes the marketing so much powerful and impactful, mm -hmm. both in positive and negative way. So when, when it comes to positivity, of course, uh, I tap upon your rich experience you have got uh, through your education or your value system or uh, your understanding of different uh, topics negative side if you you can be completely a tunnel vision now and you know just 
tap upon one thought of thinking and go with it. And it may still create, generate a lot of feed for you in a negative way. We have seen in politics too, how things can completely go unidirectional and mm -hmm. the same uh, tactics can somehow be so much positively impactful. So I believe that the power of collaboration and tapping the diverse backgrounds of different people and putting them on the table, listen, learn, educate yourself and grow is, the, is a significant step to better marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, I was not a firm believer or maybe I did not see the potential coming in. But today I firmly believe that you cannot nail a single marketing strategy by yourself. You need the power of people in that. That's good. What I've what I would say I've come to learn, um, and I won't say that I necessarily didn't believe in it five years ago. I'll say that I didn't even know really maybe that it existed five years ago. <laughs> How about that? Um, is like the power of personal branding. Hmm. Like how powerful um, and that type of marketing, being able to create a personal brand um, that becomes familiar and people gain trust in it and then when they mm -hmm. see it they're instantly that they, they you know you you jump past the normal filters you may have to go for familiar trust I'll listen mm -hmm. um I think there's something powerful with that um and to be very conscious about how you create a personal brand for yourself so you can cut through that um, that's something I wouldn't have really thought about five years ago, but now, like, when you think of influencers, in a sense, like, that's, I think that's kind of the formula. Um, mm. And to be a successful one, you must create a successful brand. So that's definitely something I've, I've learned kind of watching, watching trends online. Mm. Yeah, I was going to note, I feel for maybe my generation, personal branding is is kind of table stakes. Like it's just a very maybe individual, like I've been personal branding for six, seven years, right? Like it just was natural of like, this is how I get jobs. This is how I connect with people. It's not, you know, maybe the old traditional way of sending out 50, you know, applications and, and doing 50 cover letters. Um, actually, the job I currently have with O'Connor Connective came through that. I posted about being laid off and instantly, you know, DMs came and it was uh, connecting with Bridget, the, the CEO there. So that was the testament to the kind of power of branding and the fact I think that people, I don't want to maybe put an age, but there's a certain age that you can see that the pendulum of like, why would I do that? Like, I'm not going to put myself out there like that versus kids. It's like, how couldn't I put myself, this is how I do social mm -hmm. media. So I find that to be unique, the generational differences or ways they see. Jordan, oh, I'm don't. okay. You can put my age out there like <laughs> that. Cause I'm, I am the, I am the person you are talking about. <laughs> I didn't want to point fingers. So if the I'm shoe all, fits, I appreciate I'm okay you putting with that. it on. <laughs> shoe fits. <laughs> I love it. And, and Andy, I did want to just touch on that collaboration. I think many times we create our marketing in silos, whether it's a marketing plan or a content series, but I've really found much value in content I've consumed, having it be a collaborative piece. It's a company, but they're getting insights from 10 CMOs or they're, they're connecting with another company. And it's like the, the content or the marketing is far better than if done by themselves. So I really enjoy right. that kind of touch on that because it's not talked about maybe enough in the marketing. I know kind of in, you know, making change and all that things, I think collaboration is, is kind of a buzzword. And a lot of people are talking about that community change comes through collaboration and that's understood. But with marketing, I think it's, it's becoming more understood as we move in the future. Awesome. Well, you talked about it a bit. You both have a podcast. Before I ask any questions on the podcast, I'd love for you just to maybe give kind of like to any of the listeners on here why they should listen. What's it about before I kind of drill you with a few questions on it? I will leave that question to Timber first because he's the one who came up with this wonderful idea of Ooh. podcast. I knew about podcasts, but I was never a part of one of them, like in terms of being the marketing lead or even doing the scripting. So yeah, Timber, go ahead. Um, well, the, what I would share about there's two podcasts that I participate in. I have one personal podcast called The Kosh, uh, which is centered around um, Oshkosh and the surrounding Fox Cities region. And then I share a podcast with uh, Andy here, 
And that one is called Appleton Engaged. And really the one difference between the two is the cash really focuses on um, getting to know your neighbors, ripping down the silos, um, doing long form interview style of just uh, talking to people, understanding who they are and um, how do they engage the community? What, how do they feel things are going in the community and then being able to share a topic of the week of their choosing. Um, average episode is like uh, an hour, an hour and 20 minutes to two hours plus. Wow. Uh, we, we just let people go and really talk. And really the, what's the cool thing that happens is it's very conversational and it's a way to rip down silos. Um, I have very much had the feeling like we don't know our neighbors anymore. We don't know the people that live in our community like that anymore. And like this really makes you understand um, how rich and how diverse and how engaged our community really is. And then um, Appleton Engaged, on the other hand, the approach was we have such a resource rich region here in Appleton and the surrounding Fox Cities area uh, that most people don't know all the great resources that are available. Um, and we created that podcast from a DEI lens, a diversity, equity, and inclusion lens. And the thought process is there's four things that tend to help uh, make a community feel inclusive and people feel like to belong. And that is to create um, opportunities to build trust um, uh, on from the community side and those institutions, institutional sides uh, with the community. Um, to, uh, to celebrate engagement, create opportunities for engagement, um, particularly community engagement, um, representation, showing the various types of representation in the community, and then most importantly, in this case, the resources, making sure that we point out all the amazing resources that we have. Yeah, I recently saw you shared a post with uh, or a podcast episode with Eden Weller. Um, so I I am uh, got that on my in my queue. But why, with everything you just said, makes a lot of sense. But why wouldn't you just create a social media post for each of these resources? Why wouldn't you have a newsletter that delivers? And maybe you do, but like, why podcasting? Why was that the channel for this message? I think there's something powerful about actually get, uh, like auditorially being able to hear people tell their stories and hear them use their words and say it mm -hmm. their ways. Um, and podcasting as the platform in, in particular, what I like about it is I think in a lot of ways, it's the platform of today in the sense of when you think about radio from back in the day, you turned on your radio and you work while you listen to the radio and you wash clothes, you do dishes, mm -hmm. you fix the garage, whatever it is, you put it on in a background and you continued on with the day while you were able to engage and connect with the radio, right? Well, podcasting very much does the exact same things, except for you get the opportunity that A, it's on demand, um, which, and, and it has that instant gratification component, which is very attractive to today's generations, right? So, there's just something about that, um, to me, that that type of platform to be able to communicate and connect with people. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you can humanize the you know entire ex experience because what, when you see a particular graphic, because in the sea of so many graphics, that gets lost. So if you look at the marketing tactic we have used, we have also added a cap, you know, a audio clip to the graphic so it's not a static graphic and people exactly know whether I want to listen to this one or maybe I will save it for later whatever it is but that audio itself creates a strong sense of belonging that, okay I need to listen to this because I always believe every episode we record it does not only impact the people who are listening it also impacts us as a person like mm -hmm. oh I didn't know about this see so much work goes on and before you criticize people just see how much work is already being done and whether you want to be a part of it part of that discussion part of that conversation or you just want to criticize because you love criticizing people so I think uh, that's a great directory where you can jump in volunteer donate support whatever you want to do our podcast is an open directory for people just see the people what they're doing and if it interests you hey just just indulge 
indulge into that conversation. So that's the entire idea. And I think it is impactful. And I hope moving forward that it will continue to create, create the impact we are envisioning for this project. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I think as as you're talking there, I'm trying to in my head think, okay, I've I've read a lot of things that have maybe brought me to an emotional state. But that that level of writing needs to be very competent to get me there. Think about anytime someone starts to talk and they get emotional. I don't know about you, but boom, oh, I'm instantly going to the bathroom. I'm I'm kind of my head's down because I'm crying too. So I think that's something you can't get in written form, no matter if you literally transcribe what they said. It's like that voice, the way that it was excited, sad. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. That really stood out to me as why kind of for these stories, it's very impactful to use audio um, to share. I love that. What, after you've been doing a little bit of podcasting, how has podcasting maybe changed or reshaped your approach to marketing business? Has it kind of further reinforce something or did it open your eyes and maybe there were things we've shared already but maybe it opened your eyes to something new that you would have never saw if you didn't jump in the podcast world it did change a lot of lot for us and i think both as as co-host of the podcast we didn't see many things uh you know what this project entailed we just thought of like, we'll have a conversation, but you know, that's what I say. It impacts us every day. It impacts, we have seen guests choking on the episodes, like they, they are unable to speak because there was a storytelling component. And when they said why they do this thing, what passion drives them to do things, they chokes up. I mean, those are fascinating stories behind their passion and why they triumph in the uh, course they have chosen for themselves. So yes, there are marketing tactics, even if you see, I have kept it deliberately black, intentionally black and white, because you can see both of us come from different demographics, ethnicities. So it is important that we have these honest conversation with the people who come on this platform. We ask them good questions, good, good discourses, and try to like change our lens to like, maybe this was this the lens I was I was reading in school in the books are doing to change a bit of my mindset. So yeah, I'm telling you, like undoing your mindset is itself a very difficult thing because you have been raised with that. You have been raised with that culture. So it helps us to like make our uh, marketing better, uh, our questions better, the way we caption our episodes uh, becomes a little different every time I mm. post, like, you know, I try to ask, hey, do you wanna do this? Do you want to, uh, have you ever felt of joining a children organization which helps for the advocacy? Uh, so uh, we try to change captions, we try to change little bit of picture or uh, the way we present the information a bit. But yes, this is uh, pretty impactful for us. And uh, we didn't see uh, what we are going to see uh, in this conversation. But I love this podcast every day I hear. Mm -hmm. I, I think I became a better person, if, if you ask me. And I continue to learn every day. I'm very surprised by the impact of it. Um, but as far as from a marketing standpoint, I'm really... Like my thing was making podcasts and Andy brought marketing to it. Hmm. And so that has drastically increased the reach of this podcast. Um, this podcast is doing, uh, I've been doing the cash for uh, what will be two and a half going on three years. And this podcast has already caught up to my audience of the uh, of of the cash and we just started this one um we really released our first episode i believe in june is that right andy that's right so i mean and that was because of the different marketing techniques that andy brought to it the the branding the visualization um the you utilizing this snippet uh the audio snippet when you scroll by like it just starts talking to you like there's so much I'm learning from her about that mm -hmm. um that I I didn't know what I didn't know so like it's impressive and you can tell it's making a difference because of the way people are engaging us about the content people are listening like there's mm -hmm. true ears out there paying attention mm -hmm. 
I love that. Andy, do you want to give us one of those? Th- I mean, he listed a lot of those, but like, what was the one thing that you brought to the podcast from a marketing standpoint that you think helped the most, or maybe it wouldn't be where it's as much impact if not that, w- if whatever tactic or thing was done? That's a good question, Jordan. I will not take credit because again, it's the power of collaboration, you see. <laughs> but what, yeah. what I believe was like, you know, uh, DI is a difficult topic, especially for older population. They sometimes don't understand exactly what DI stands for. And sometimes because of our political narrative, it just gets in automatically in our brain that DI is something which is divisive or something which has underlying negative connotation, or it's like dividing communities instead of mm-hmm. uniting them by voicing one community's uh, voice over other, but this is actually not the truth. So to get the DEI lens into a city space was a very challenging perspective. So we, that's why I said, first step was to make it black and white. Just take the colors away from everybody's face, make it black and white. So that just, they just can un, only indulge in the information part of it. Second, creating a, you know, a list of questions, which Timber did. He created a list of questions so that we can Keep the guest on that path. He may share everything around it, but it should not divert into a space where we do not want to land up. That mm. could be a different space, but not in this space. So DEI space here was to like, the goal was to keep it clean and just resource specific. And the third part was like, you know, taking out the clip out of it, what exactly this podcast is about. It's a, it's a short format, as you see, it's a 30 minute, 35 minute long. The people don't have to like, you know, uh, listen to too big of an episode and they just can uh, just, you know, click, listen and done. done. So that was another way to look at it. And then we uploaded on different platforms. We we increased the number of platforms we uh, we were reaching out to our people, mm-hmm. uh, like on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. LinkedIn was actually a big hit because most of our guests who are professional in their field, uh, you know, networks in that, on that platform. And then the last but not the least, uh, the captions, the way we are sharing the resource. We always have their uh, Facebook, their website, and how to contact them listed on that particular uh, you know caption we give so that people just do not only listen to this podcast, but also go to the post and find out the information about them. Mm. So it's like giving them writing uh, information in writing, giving them audio clip. So I think it's a good package if you see. They don't have to look even for the real person who is behind this particular organization. Sometimes we wonder who who is the guy am I am I going to speak to? So that that is the work we are doing mm-hmm. for you. So now you know who the, who you have to reach out to. Just just go call them up, reach out to them, sign up, and whatever you need to do. So that was the idea from the marketing perspective, and I think we'll continue to delve deeper and see if there are other specific way we can we can improve in the ways we reach. What I will say is um. It, particularly Appleton Engaged, Appleton Engaged is almost like a marketing trade-off. Our podcast grows with each guest and the in the association of the different resource that they're associated with and them giving us the background and how does it how can how do they help the community and how how we as a community can help them. But the trade-off is we are also promoting their organization, their resource, and we're pushing them out there in their voice. Right. Um, and we're raising their platform because since Appleton Engage is a city's podcast, this is kind of saying, mm. you know, the city, not that it endorses, endorses it, but we're saying, yeah, this is good stuff happening in our city. And we do endorse the good things happening in our city. And so that's marketing in itself, too. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. And both your answers, I mean, it seems like there's so much both in the distribution of it, but even kind of the design of it to design it in the 40 or 20 to 30 minute rather than this slide. So it's so interesting that times the output is, is there's so many different decisions that were made to get to your point, Andy, some output that is accessible that can instantly get the person to understand this is a cause or this is something I need to engage with. That's, that's really powerful, but it, it, it takes a lot of work, right? You can't just say, I'm going to turn on a camera uh, without those questions, without some of these things, it doesn't happen. I think that's the typical overnight success is never truly overnight. There's no. a lot of time. And Jordan, you work in the marketing and uh, you will know that it looks candid, but it, everything is by design. 
<laughs> yes, sadly, the, oh. the curtain has been pulled <laughs> for the market for non marketers out there. Yeah, no, we're always designing things. Um, that's great. So I think I think I got a lot from that, even just as a podcaster, kind of that I'll be able to apply. But I think I'm ready to jump into the marketing hot seat if you both are ready. Okay. So first question of the hot seat, storytelling or data-driven content for creating impactful content? Storytelling for me. Facts. <laughs> Live community events or engaging over digital avenues, whether a podcast or even social media, which would you choose? I will go for life for sure because there's no other uh, avenue to life. But yes, depends upon the uh, flexibility and the need of the hour. I will choose both of them. I think it matters what is trying to be communicated. Correct. I, I think it depends. They each, yeah, it, it depends. depends. They, they each have um, their pluses and minuses depending on what. But I, I do lean where Andy's leaning that nothing tops in person. 100%. Guest diversity or topic diversity, if you had to choose? Guest. Same. Which is the future, video or audio? Hmm. For some people, video does a great uh, you know, impact, but for some, audio does the best. Like for older generation, audio, yes, hands down. Especially people who are always, always traveling. The audio is the best one for that. Yes. I'm going to go video um, just with the way of um, hardware is going. Hmm. I like that. All right. Now we're jumping into the yes or no. So if you have more comments, add, but a yes or no is sufficient. Is quantifying community engagement important to having successful engagement in the community? Is it important to track it? Yes. Yes. Is humor an effective tool in addressing serious issues such as maybe DEI or other things along those lines? Is humor um, a way to kind of talk about tough things? Yes, but it should be in a, in a good sense. Yes. Do you need a mentor or somebody kind of that you can seek wisdom from to succeed in business? Or do you see more peer-to-peer -peer connection and that is enabling to rise someone to the ranks or do they need a mentor? Peer-to-peer -peer maybe? Both. I love it. <laughs> Will podcasts still be around in 10 years? Yes. Yes. Is distribution, sharing of the podcast important for that podcast to be successful? Or can you just record it and not share it or distribute it? Distribution is, is very important. Correct. I second that. All right. Now, finally, open-ended question so you can give a little bit more to the answer. What's one mental model or framework you've used to improve your podcast? Looking at the analytics, actually. It helps mm. us to shape like where exactly we are going because we are seeing a lot of women are tuning in. And as a woman, I can say we are more emotional. So the power of storytelling becomes much, much more important for us in the podcast. But we are not saying that we do not cater to our <laughs> uh, other uh, audience segments. So we are also looking at ways to entice them into listening. So yeah, it helps us to like, you know, get our A game on. I don't think I got a good answer for that yet. Pass. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, I'm going to take a pass. pass. <laughs> Phone a friend. All right. What's a book or resource that has helped you the most in your career, whether that be marketing or even just like, you know, self-management or other things? Is there a book or resource that comes to mind? 48 Laws of Power. I agree with that because now, because I travel with him a lot, so <laughs> I have started using those audio books. So yeah, that is powerful. To understand the human nature, Yes. And who is that? I'm forgetting the author. Who is Green? Uh, uh, um, yes. Is it Michael Green? Michael? I did, don't quote me on that. I did, yeah. Because here's the thing. I do audio books. I don't do hardcover books. So sometimes I never really <laughs> get to know who the author, author is. Like I'm just, I just press play and I go. Get the nuggets from it, right? Get the yes, right. insights. I love that. 
What is one piece of advice you sh- you would share with whether a company or just a person that's thinking about starting or doing a podcast? What's a piece of advice? Learn your audience first, and what kind? What, what's your theme, and who are you catering to? Just choose guest accordingly. No, yes, definitely know your audience. Uh, know what you're trying to convey. Um, know what your you know what your message is, or or you know, what are you doing it for? Who are you talking to? Um, what's the purpose? I mean, know your purpose, I guess, is the best way to put it. That'd be good for both podcast and life. But uh, what's one of the most unconventional pieces of advice you've given or you've received on business marketing that actually now it's like that has helped a lot, even though it was quite unconventional when received or given? This was given to me by one of my first mentor and she told, I was getting worked up and I said, I was, I'm burning out. And, you know, this person always comes and gives me a bunch of work and doesn't delegate the same to other people. And then she said, Andy, work is given to those who know how to do it. Mm. So don't take it that way. Yeah. You have every right to complain if you're like, no, I can't take it anymore, but always remember they find you competent and that's why you are being chosen to do the work. So, you know, just believe in yourself and, you know, continue to do because you will learn at the end of the day if nothing else you will learn a lot a mentor can only take you as far as they've been mm. and what i mean by that is you sometimes have to know when to shed a mentor and get a new mentor there's mm. levels to it oh that's good it's almost like that rocket that has to release mm-hmm. that thing on the side obviously i'm very unintelligent with it or i know the name but that's kind of that to get to that height you can't carry all that. And that's probably a metaphor that could apply to like baggage and stuff. But aside from that, thank you for uh, making it through the hot seat. Now I love to jump into some life questions because I think a lot of marketing as you open timber is life. It's the way we think about things. If I view people as tools, my marketing will be quite transactional. So I find this powerful. So the first question I like to ask is based off of a movie. It's called uh, Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, if you haven't heard it, I'll give you a real rough spark note. They go into people's minds, they incept dreams. That person wakes up the next day with that dream, thinking the dream was theirs. So maybe it's to sell my company or maybe it's to do something. So if you could incept one idea in the mind of every human, whether it's about marketing or business or life, that they wake up tomorrow and they act out of that idea, that belief as their own, what's that idea that you incept? Timber, you want to go first? I'll take a crack at it. Um, That we are more the same than different. Oh, I love that. That's good. If you ask me, it's actually a hard question for me, but I'll say just open your mind and absorb the beauty you see in different people and just explore. Life is too short. Play it Mm. big. I love that. I love that. Both really good answers. What is a value or belief that you think deserves more attention, more focus, and more actualizing that we aren't currently doing today? So maybe for me, it's temperance, discipline. I think we need more of that. What's a virtue, a belief that you think needs more focus today? I will say learn to unlearn things which you have which have been taught. If you feel like your rationale is saying something else, it's time to unlearn things which your culture told you to. So for me, that's a big, big debacle sometimes. But yes, yeah, sometimes you have to fight the debacle and say, hey, this is what the right thing to do is. So learn to unlearn. I think um, learning the importance of time. And maybe the better way to put it is the realization that time is the most valuable resource you are ever blessed with. Hmm. I love that. Every newsletter I send uh, on Fridays, I end with every second counts because I truly believe um, how we use our time is of the most. And I think with uh, giving of time, yes, I can write a check for a million or I can't, but someone can. But to give every week to a, a, a charity or something with my time. Yeah, that's powerful. I love that. It's the most valuable resource you have to give. Because you can't recreate more of it. I mean, you can extend yours, but well, you you think? I mean, you 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 can't necessarily make more of it. You don't know how much of it you have, and when it's gone, it's gone. Mm. Yeah, can't can't go bankrupt on time and come back, right? But money, 
you can you can make your way back to a million dollars or whatever. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, I, I needed to hear that as uh yeah. What is what is a habit or practice that you do outside of business, outside of podcasting that enables you to come back to podcasting, back to business and just do it a little bit better or with more clarity? Oh, absolutely. That's a great question for me. Uh, I'm also an Indian classical dancer. So I do go to a lot of places and that has actually shaped my communication. I always, that's why I've kept it so broader that, you know, when you meet people, when you show your art, you connect on art. So as we say, art and music, they are great equalizers. So that helps you to open up so many channels of conversation. So art has a great way to get into people's life and connect people. Sometimes we don't understand the lyrics, but we enjoy music. So that's the power of music. It transcends boundary. And that is what helped me also in my city job to like reach out to people because I know art taught me how to do that. And I just, with my communication skills, I still continue to do that. Mm, that's good. I really enjoy meeting people. Just all sorts of people from all different places and walks of life. And that energizes me to continue to meet more people. And this... um the podcast has really been an amazing vehicle to invite people to have a conversation that I might not ever have gotten to have or to get to meet that person um, and just spend time and share um, is powerful. Yeah. And, and maybe that's why you're, you're good at podcasting or you, you lean towards it is because of that curiosity gene of people. Like you're curious of people, you love meeting them. And I find the conversations I have off the podcast aren't too different than the, the conversations I have. You'll ask anybody that knows me, he asks a lot of questions. He's always inverting, he's contrarian, all these things. And you, you hear it here. So I, I like that. It's almost like a there's a better word for it, but a cycle that feeds itself. It's like I go out and I meet someone not on a podcast and then I come back to my podcast. And I'm more excited or curious. Oh, I love that. That's a unique answer. I haven't heard that uh, yet. All right. Final question. I could do this for hours with both of you. Obviously, your podcast experts. This is fun. One final question, though. With everything changing, with AI, with uh, just everything changing constantly and change, Let's 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 talk about one thing you hope doesn't change. What do you hope stays the same in 10, 15 years that maybe we have it today or maybe we we're, we're losing it, but you just hope in 10, 15 years, wherever AI is at, that's cool. But this needs to be here. Good purpose and focus. It should not get lost. If you are not purpose and what you are focusing on, you see the channels will change. The technology will change, but all your goal and what exactly you want to achieve from that will never change. So be mindful of that. Um, I'm just going to go with simply put, um, making sure that like there's lots of opportunities for personal engagement with each other. You know, that we don't, we don't go over virtual. Yes. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, that I, I appreciate the convenience of virtual as much as anyone, but there is nothing like sitting down with an individual and sharing a coffee. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's like in the Bible, there's a reason he didn't say two, three meet over Zoom, I'm with you. It's two to three in the same room, I'm with you. So I, I like that. And I think there is that power to a few people in a room that you just can't get online. So to your point, leverage, maximize, enhance your life with it, but don't be consumed and fall into the, the digital um, black hole. I love it. Well, thank you both so much for coming on. This is the first time I've done this and I had so much fun, fun learning from two people versus one. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Jordan. You, and always stay curious. That will be my last Ooh, um, I love piece it. of advice to you. Stay curious. Curiosity feeds good mind. Mm. And thank that you. is, go ahead, Dibber. Oh, I was going to say, just, just thank you, Jordan, and um, be blessed. Thank you. Thank you. You both take care. And this is the Thanks. end of the podcast. Thank you for making it to the end. It means the world to me that you watch or you listen to this episode. And hopefully you're walking away with new insights to improve how you think, 
about marketing and life and help you make progress on what matters to you. But one thing before you go, if you could subscribe wherever you're listening to this or watching, that would really help out both you getting the episodes right when they come out and raising this podcast in the ranking. So hopefully more people like you can listen to this. And if there's anything that I can do to make this podcast more beneficial for you, if it's somebody you think I should interview, if you're the person, please comment, please email me. It's in the show notes so we can just continually deliver more value to you, the listener. Again, thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day, evening, week, and hope to see you here next time.